Hello, and welcome to Fix My Hog. This is a live event. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dennis Santapetro. Look at that on the screen. It says my name. Yeah, and it's spelled that. correctly. Look that's, at that. That's pretty hard to do. Nice. That is pretty hard to do. I've been trying all my life. Yeah. Um, well, I'm here with Mike Roan. Thanks for coming out today. Right. Um, we're doing this live event. Mike's got his notes. He's got a bunch of brake parts here. We just want to touch base a little bit on the history of brakes. Um, the good and the bad of Harley's systems throughout the years. Pretty much a general overview. Yeah. yeah. Some other related components. Some you know. failure points, some good, some bad. Yeah. Um, some products when they switched from one fluid to the other. Um, kind of through the years. Exactly. So. If you're on the fixmahog.com website, in the chat box, the orange, it's orange, I believe, I'm colorblind, uh, you can put questions in there. And uh, I'm going to swing back over, and after Mike's done doing his uh, demonstration, I'll uh, read out some, some questions to Mike, and he'll get to them. Um, what we want to do is kind of keep these on brake-related questions today, not, uh, hey, my bike won't start, you know, something like that. It's, we might be able to get to those, but we really want to focus on uh, brakes today. Um, also, under the chat box, there is a download, troubleshooting with uh, trouble codes. That, oh, look at that. I, did you do that? Look, it's like magic. Um, so oh, you can click on that. Nice. You can download that. That's free. Um, the other thing about Fix Mahog, if you're not familiar with it, please check us out. There's tons of free videos. Uh, join to be a member. Um, we have, I don't know, 800 plus videos. We have wow. topics from maintenance, performance upgrades, projects. Uh, we just finished the knucklehead project. We have... Uh, some shovelhead videos coming up. We have panhead series coming up. Mike is going to do an evolution series for us. We have all the twin cam maintenance videos, performance, M8 maintenance and performance. So check out all the categories on the site. I'm blabbing because I don't know what to say. So Perfect. I'll let you get at Keep it. Keep right on going, man. You got, you got your notes. Yeah. Um, and I'll go over there. And when you're done, I'll shoot you sure. some questions. All right, man. Sounds Thanks, good. Buddy. Okay, like Dan was saying, we're just going to be doing a general overview of all the Harley brake components and kind of covering all the ear groups, uh, just looking at problems and suggestions and, you know, upgrades. But really, you know, what we can do is kind of start kind of at the beginning, the history. And uh, he had mentioned earlier about uh, Kevin Bass and doing the restoration on the knucklehead. And if you watch that video, you're going to see Kevin get into drum brakes. And that's really what motorcycles all had back then. And, uh, you know, he kind of goes over the maintenance thing on drum brakes pretty good. But if you buy an older motorcycle and you've got a newer motorcycle and you ride a motorcycle with drum brakes, you're going to realize, wow, you know, you think about it. They put a man on the moon in 69, but they certainly couldn't stop a motorcycle. So it's going to take a little bit to adapt to riding a motorcycle like that. So you buy an old vintage bike, it's got drum brakes. Don't get out in rush hour traffic and start trying to go to the flow of traffic and think, oh, I, I got this situation covered because the second you dynamite those brakes, it's not going to be like your twin cam. <laughs> You're going to need uh, a lot more real estate to slow that thing down. And of course, uh, with a drum brake, they don't like heat. They fade, they go away. So time moves on. You know, my little sister bought an old Mustang like five years ago and she said, there, there's something wrong with my brakes. And I drove the car and I said, nope, that's how they were. They didn't have power brakes. <laughs> so you just kind of have to have that mindset when you roll, when you ride old equipment, it's not like new equipment. So moving on, uh, you know, you, you keep going through the years. Basically, Harley kind of, they had to step up. The British, the Japanese, everybody was getting hydraulic brakes, you know, with uh, a caliper. And, uh, you know, moving on, drum brakes were gone. You know, everybody saw the writing on the wall. So what did Harley do? You know, they came out with the banana caliper on the shovel heads in the early 70s. And, and that was basically their platform. If you had an FX or if you had an FL, this was your baby. And, um, you know, it wasn't all that great, but it was, it was a step in the right direction. You know, it's the 70s, so they weren't like chasing weight and thinking performance, but this, they call it the banana caliper just because of the shape here. And this is a 77 FL. I bought it like 20 some years ago. 
and I did the restoration on the motorcycle and I started riding it quite a bit. And right away I realized <laughs> these brakes got to go because I was riding in traffic and I was used to riding so many different motorcycles that had good brakes that I knew, you know, eventually I, I did upgrade the brakes to a twin cam 00 to 07 and the wheels too. And, and now I got good brakes on my shovel head. But for the most part, pretty archaic. You know, they're weird because they had pretty good lever feel, but they just didn't work very well. So there again, if you've got an old shovel and it's got the, the uh, banana caliper on it, don't expect it to be like your twin cam. So put that aside. So check my notes here. Um, you know, then got through the 70s. The Evo came along, 84 to 99. They had a fairly decent braking system, you know, it worked all right, it was adequate. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, by the mid-90s they could have probably made it a lot better. If you look at all the metric bikes, the sport bikes, they really, in terms of braking, they really went far with it and, and came along and hardly kind of drug their heels on it until about 2000s. Then they came out with this platform here, you know, and it was pretty good. That's what I got on my bike, and they ran that all the way to 07. 2008, Brembo, and uh, that's basically what, we got Nate's bike here, I think it's a 2012, but anything 2008 and later for touring, it's gonna have the Brembo brake. Brembo, it's got a pretty good name in the industry, um, nothing really wrong with it, uh, you know, we did see some issues with them warping rotors prematurely, but you know, it depends on your riding style, so. Take a peek here, see where I'm gonna go next. Really, I guess uh, where I want to start is with brake fluid because um, it's for a while there, nobody ever talked about brake fluid. It was like just something you didn't think about. 2008 rolls along, these motorcycles get ABS and they're running dot four brake fluid. Now all of a sudden brake fluid's a big deal. So let me back up a little bit. All the earlier motorcycles basically on Harleys were dot five silicone. So keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is your factory manual, you know, because you're always going to want to refer to what your motorcycle is running for brake fluid. You might have bought the motorcycle used and you think, well, I know what kind of brake fluid I, my motorcycle has because it says it right here on the cap. Doesn't mean that that's the right cap for your bike. Uh, Junior might have went out and bought a chrome aftermarket one and he bought the wrong year group one, but it still fit. And now it says dot five on there and it's supposed to have dot four. Suddenly you're contaminating your brake fluids and that's a big deal. You don't want to put dot four in dot five. You don't want to put dot five in dot four. So look at your manual, find out what year your motorcycle is, put the right brake fluid in it. And obviously, you know, you're going to want to flush that brake fluid. You know, these motorcycles are getting old now. It's kind of hard to believe. Twin cam came out in 1999. It doesn't seem that long ago, but that's some pretty old brake fluid in there. So let me get back to the, the year group where they, they stopped using DOT5 because for the most part, DOT5 silicone brake fluids, really good brake fluid. And I think uh, what happened in 2005, all the FL touring models got DOT4 brake fluid. Why? I'm not sure, probably cost because dot five costs a lot more than dot four. You're making 300,000 motorcycles, makes sense. Also, I think what they had on the horizon was they knew ABS was coming. So they're probably trying to groom people into thinking dot four. And with that, um, you know, 2008, we get ABS. Now suddenly um, we're having ABS failures, why? because people aren't changing their dot four brake fluid enough. Uh, it's more susceptible to breaking down, absorbing moisture, whatever, deteriorating. Uh, people aren't purging their ABS unit enough and then it deteriorates and now you got a bad ABS unit. Harley sends out a bulletin every two years now. And so that becomes a big issue. Uh, not to say on your old bike with dot five silicone, you probably should be changing that too because now you've got such an old motorcycle that you need to inspect the brake lines, the calipers, everything, you know, when you're, you're talking, this motorcycle is almost 50 years old. If I was still running the banana caliper, I'd be looking over everything, you know, 
provided when I flush it. Here's a little uh, example of, you know, some deterioration on brake fluid. You know, you buy this motorcycle, it's, maybe it's a basket case, maybe it's been sitting, and uh, if it's been sitting for more than, what, four, five, six years, maybe it's been sitting there 10 years, you can kind of bank on the fact that you're going to have some serious maintenance ahead of you when it comes to the brake components. Because if it's been sitting, you can see all the deterioration that's going on here. Master cylinder, you know, it's probably going to have to be rebuilt. Or worse yet, all the aluminum's deteriorated in there and it's pitted. So you can rebuild it till the cows come home and guess what? You still have a problem. So now you're into, now I got to replace the whole assembly. So brake fluid, it's really important. Another thing is you overheat your brakes and uh, that's not brake fluid anymore. Like a chemical reaction takes place. It's just a liquid in there that's not doing anything. So if you really, I mean, not that you're going to be road racing your bike, but if you overheat it or you think you have, you're in the mountain, you're two up, you got a trailer, I don't know your scenario, but at any rate, change your brake fluid every two years, you'll feel good about yourself. So, okay, we covered that base. I think next up, might as well talk about rotors because uh, we'll just jump into that. So, brake rotors, I don't know what your, your motorcycle is. Like I said, 84 to 99. You're talking Evo, you're gonna have something similar to this. A big old heavy duty rotor. Harley's not worried about weight. You know, they're just making motorcycles and they want them stopped. So when you're putting brake pads in your bike, you're always gonna ref you're gonna look at the rotor. It's gonna be under scrutiny because you know what you're looking for is uh, you know, I don't have a totally wasted rotor here, but what happens, you can probably get a shot of that. There's Usually a lip develops here, and that's kind of an indicator that, okay, my rotor, you know, this bike's got 60,000 miles on it, and I got a nice lip on here. Guess what? Well, there is kind of a lip right here, actually, in the transition, so this thing's got some time on it. I'm doing brake pads. Guess what? I'm going to splurge, and I'm going to buy me a brand new brake rotor, because I love to do the maintenance on my bike, and I want it right. So keep that in mind if you're going down that road, if you got an older motorcycle doing some restoration. Another thing is, I don't know if you can see this, if he can see that or not, I'll give it to you, but this thing is severely warped. And maybe you can tell, but at any rate, how does that happen? A couple different ways. Um, more than likely, what might have happened is somebody put brand new brake pads in their motorcycle. And all along, someone had been topping off the brake fluid. So they put the brand new brake pads in, they retract them, they put it on, and what they don't realize is there's too much brake fluid in the system now. They go out for a ride, they get a little heat in the bike, and I don't know if you know this, but you cannot compress a liquid. So it just forces those pistons back out, puts the brakes on the rotor, incrementally the heat starts increasing, it intensifies the brake fluid, fluids boiling and now you're on the side of the road and you got a rotor that looks like this and my motorcycle won't roll you're right it won't roll so anytime you put brake pads in your bike you got to take your master cap off and you got to set the brake fluid you pump it up check the level which brings me to another really good topic is when you do put the brake pads in always pump up the brake because you're always checking that brake light. You need to know if the brake light's working both front and rear. Because I tell you what, I've done it in the last 39 years. I've rolled the motorcycle off my lift that I've put brakes in and I go for that test ride. And that first uh, stop sign I'm coming to, I put the rear brake on and I forgot to pump it up. It gets your attention. And you might not have the luxury of having that extra tenth of a second when you put the brake on you might need your brake in that tenth of a second. So pump up your brake, make sure the brake light's working, set the brake fluid level. If you and your buddies are going on a road trip that weekend and your buddy says, yeah, I just put brakes in my bike, do them a favor and say, let's check your brake fluid level because I don't want you wrecking my weekend with you know being on the side of the road 100 miles down the road or whatever. So pretty important. Um, 
you know, brake rotors, of course, obviously, over the years, you know, Harley's trying to make them better. And we, we can look, just look at a couple of these. This is basically, this is an 07, 00 to 07 brake rotor right here. Let me give you a shot of that. Now, compare that to the old evil one. I'd say there's, I don't know, it feels like 10 pounds difference. It's, it's probably not, but look at the thickness. They, they kind of built it back then. They, they might have over-engineered it because they, you know, wanted it to last. And, and now they're, they're going, hey, wow, we can make these thinner. We can make them lighter. They're drilled. And they're trying to, you know, with this design, they're trying to absorb that heat so this rotor can actually warp and then come back and hold its position. And uh, sometimes they, they kind of failed on that uh, when they did that. Some year groups are more notorious for warping the rotor. I know a 08 CVO touring models had a terrible design where the perimeter, you know, bolted on to the, the mag. And it seemed like they, they warped the rotors quickly, you know. And how do I know if I have a warped rotor? Well. When you're putting that front brake on and you're at speed, you're always going to get feedback. You know, you got to get in tune with your motorcycle and that front brake lever is going to tell you when your rotors are warped. It's going to start out with a real slight pulse. You st and the more you dynamite that brake, you know, the more it's going to get worse. The more you ride it, the more the warping is going to intensify, the more the feedback is going to get. Same thing on the rear brake. You're going to be feeling it, you know, and that's a sign, uh-oh, something's going on. Why is my rotor warped? Is it just because I've been abusing it, uh, brake fluid level, whatever, bad design, you know, so on and so forth. If I tell you what, I, it was 1990, a buddy of mine was road racing, and we were at Road America. He's doing a three-hour road race, and the factory Yamaha jumped in just for testing. So they would they'd go out, they'd do a few laps, they'd come in, and they pitted like right next to us. And Jamie James got off his bike, they put it up on the lifts, and they took that front wheel and spun it. And I think it rotated for like five minutes. There was no resistance. This thing, it's a race bike. The wheel bearings are top notch. The brakes, they retract so that wheel can freewheel because they want to go fast, but they want to stop. When you're working on your motorcycle, um, you're going to put brake pads in it, you're going to set the brake level, and you're going to have the wheel off the ground, and you're going to roll. And you need to determine, okay, is this thing freewheeling properly? Because if it isn't, you got to go back in and see what, what did I screw up or what's going on with my motorcycle? Because it's your brakes, and it's not a car. And when you fall out on asphalt, it hurts. So you don't, you don't want to do that. Um, the other thing is I don't have a really good rotor here to show it, but they're called floating rotors. And uh, actually Harley sells them, uh, aftermarket vendors sells them. And what they have is they have a rivet like this, but they have a multiple of, of rivets. And what that's allowing the, the rotor to do is find center way more accurately. So, uh, you know, if, if you're time to upgrade your rotors, I always want to spend the money for the full floating rotor because that's the cool guy rotor, you know. So while we're talking about rotors, um, believe it or not, some people are kind of sensitive to brake noise on Harleys. I know it's hard to believe, but uh, they are. And one thing you can do when you're doing your brake job, get yourself some brake contact cleaner and a rag and clean your rotor up nice and clean. Because over time, depending on the road you live on, Debris is going to get impregnated into this rotor and it's going to get impregnated into your brake pads and you might get a squeak and guess what, you know, then they think, oh, my brakes are shot, they're squeaking. Motorcycle comes in, I look at the brake pads and go, no, nope, you haven't used your front brake at all. It's squeaking because there's dust and debris on there. Clean it up, go ride it another couple thousand miles and if it starts squeaking again, Clean your brakes again, do an inspection on the brake pads, make sure they really aren't shot. So, something to think about when you're doing your front brakes. Um, I'm sorry, Mike, since you're on rotors, um, can they be resurfaced? 
Ah, that was going to bring that up. You Guess were. what? See? You cannot. Well, I mean, I can't. No Harley dealer's going to. If you're some super duper machinist and you want to attempt to do it, you can. But the problem with that is, is now your, your caliper pistons, they only come out so far. Now you're getting in an area where, nope, lawsuits, lawyers, things, problems. So, nope. Your, your money ahead anyway, I mean, really, for a standard brake rotor, I think they're 140 bucks each or something. Aftermarket rotors, you can buy them for $500 each, you know. We're kind of, we're going to get into the aftermarket stuff here kind of at the end. I don't want to talk about that right now because I'm, I'm trying to stay on track, so. Yeah, sorry, that one just popped up, I figured, since you're on No, the I wanted to talk about that anyway. That was something on there, but I, my brain's pretty small, so. <laughs> um... Okay, so we kind of covered that. Um, I did bring up the, the Brembo. And, uh, you know, because there was a question about that. The guy said, I used a, a, an American Allen on my uh, Brembo because it's metric. It is a five millimeter thing. And that Brembo really, for the most part, those brake pads on the 08 and later touring models, it's probably the simplest bike you'll ever change brake pads on. There's one uh, Allen bolt, which is five millimeter, and you pop that out, same thing. Put the pads in, set your brake fluid level, torque everything spec, put it all together. That is a real easy motorcycle. I mean, you're, you're on this website because you're doing all your maintenance, you got your manual. That one, I think uh, my mom could do, you know, so. At any rate, okay, now, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of just show you the 00 to 07 caliper because it's a very common break. I mean, it, it's from 00 to 07, you know, every, every twin cam, uh, big twin basically, had this style of break. And it's, it's kind of an easy break to almost screw up by putting brake pads in. For one, you can almost put these brake pads in uh, backwards, and I'll show you here. So there again, this is a socket you're going to want to have in your toolbox if you own a Harley. It's a quarter inch 12 point socket. See that? There you go. Probably says something about it in your manual too. Two bolts right here. We're going to pop them out. And we'll probably talk about brake pads and the materials and all that good stuff because there's a I could probably blab on that stuff for five minutes there's a lot of different directions you can go when it comes to brake pads but for me I like the factory brake pad um, not saying just the factory brake pad but I like the material it's sintered and, uh, you know, they started coming out with sintered brakes probably in the 90s, I would imagine. And the nice thing about a center brake pad is they work really well. They got really good longevity. And um, they don't fade, you know, with abuse. So I'll pop that out of there. Here's part of the procedure. When you're working on your motorcycle at home, and it's the weekend, and you want to go riding, and you need brake pads, here's what I want you to do. I didn't let the brake pads fall out for a reason, because this is the, the big deal with this caliper setup. I'm going to pull, I'll just try and show this like this here, I'm going to pull the, the top one out. And there it is. In fact, I'm going to get a magic marker right away, and I'm going to put an X on this thing. Because, I'll show you why. Here's the other brake pad. These two brake pads are different, so you can't put them in backwards. See this little step here? This one doesn't have it. It's not clearance that same way. So now I know, okay, guess what? I got my new brake pads. I can... I can put an X on my new brake pad that has this little same contour. So I know when I'm looking at my caliper, I got to be looking at that X. That's the side of that brake pad I got to see. Because if you flip them like this and try and put them in, you almost can do it. And I've had to go to a customer's house and trailer their bike home because they're like, I just can't get my brake pads in. It's that close. 
And uh, so you don't want to be that guy. But here's the other problem with these. And I can probably screw this up real quick and show you how easy it is to screw up. You just plop them in there like that, and you go, this is easy. It's got a little rattle clip that puts tension on the brake pad. And so you go, this, this is easy. Push it in. Take the other one. Push it in. Tighten it down. Well, actually, it went in right, but I'll see if I can screw it up better just for display purposes. Okay, you get a shot of that. Now, what, what's happened here is say I had the, if I had the brake pins in and tightened up, and then I, I roll it over and I go, huh, great, my brake pad is, uh, you know, at an angle. Now, what's happened is that brake pad's gotten under that anti-rattle clip, and you go, well, that's no big deal. I'm just going to take my flat blade screwdriver, and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to force this thing back. It almost kind of works. What you're doing is you're, you're destroying the anti-rattle clip right now. And if you, if you wank on it hard enough, eventually you'll get the brake pad spread. You'll put it on your motorcycle and you'll roll the wheel and go, hmm, God, it's just, it seems terrible. You're, you're right, it is, because now the rattle clip's not in the right place. The brake pad's still trying to work in and, and it's, so it's grabbing the rotor. So. What you probably want to do when you're putting these brake pads in is you can take, uh, you know, you can, you can probably take a flat bait and stick it in there. And all you're going to want to do is you're going to want to keep those brake pads apart because you can get a shot of that right in there. That's your rattle clip in there. And it's kind of a bogus little spring loaded thing that you don't want to, you know, damage. So, okay, there it is. There's my X. Marks the spot. Put that one in. That one in. Screwdriver in. Makes you feel good. That. And you have to depress the brake pad in because you're collapsing that, that anti-rattle clip. You don't want to have brake pads rattling because that's annoying. So. Here's the deal. You're not on flat rate, you know. If you if you won't don't take the time to pull them pins out and do it right. I mean, I've seen kids at dealerships or shops that get impatient too because it's kind of a little mouse trap. And typically, I just kind of put them in. Double check, make sure I'm not getting crazy. One in. Make sure it's still spread. Depress it. Put it in. Looks good. Tighten her up. Of course, there's to be a torque spec there, but we're good. We're not going riding today. There you go. Brake pads are in, so it's kind of an important deal, and you can see how, how fast you can get upside down on just a simple little brake pad change on your motorcycle. So, Okay, what else do we want to talk about? I suppose we could um, talk about bleeding the brakes. Um, Ideally, you know, uh, a lot of people have like a mighty vac and they're sucking the brake fluid through. Um, doesn't always work that great on a Harley. Uh, a lot of times what I end up doing is taking a syringe and I back bleed the system, you know. There again, you got to have the cap off because you can't, you still can't compress a liquid. You can try, but it, you, know, you can't. So you pull your reservoir cap off, get the proper brake fluid, crack the bleeder, and then you can actually force it back through that way. Same thing 
Um, going the other way, once you get that bled that way, then I like to put a clear hose on here, get a receptacle, and then you can uh, pump up the brake and crack the bleeder and bleed it the other way. You know, it's kind of a little game where you get to chase it back and forth. So that's one way to do it. Um, brake lines, obviously, you know, if you're, you've got an older motorcycle and you've done everything. I put the pads in, I got a rotor, I did that, that. It's still mushy. It could be, you know, if your motorcycle's 30 or 35 years old and you've got the old rubber hose, this is a, a nice new Brembo hose, but the older ones are, you know, they're made of more of a rubber material. If that thing is deteriorating, it's going to do this. Braided brake lines, they've got black pearl, they got black, they got stainless, they got chromite, they got whatever you want for a Harley. So, another thing, look at how old your motorcycle is. It's a nice upgrade. I mean, it's, I love a great brake feel. You know, I like to have that good lever feel. You know, that's just my deal because I like brakes. I think there was something else I was going to talk about, too. Mm. The brake pad material. So, okay, you can see right here, this says organic. And a lot of older motorcycles, that's all they had. That's what they ran. Um, the, they wore out quickly, they were quiet. Uh, that's what a lot of people like about them. They make uh, uh, Kevlar brake pads with center material embedded in them because they're trying to make these people happy that don't like brake noise. You know, there's there's a fair amount of brake noise on a stock motorcycle. If you if we jacked his bike up and gave it a roll, you'd hear a. <laughs> Some people fixate on that, and it drives them crazy. To where I say, well. I guess you better put Kevlar brake pads or they're super duper expensive brake pads. You can experiment around to find the brake, uh, the brake pad of your choice. So something to think about. Typically for me, it always goes back to a center brake pad because the longevity is so much better and the braking power is so much better and you know, it's, it's just brakes. So I don't fix it you know, on brake noise, but like I said, it, it drives some people crazy, you know, and Oh, the master cylinder, that's what I want to touch base on. That was a big deal. 00 to 07, uh, pretty good break, but they did have a updated superseded part number for the master cylinder kit, uh, the rebuild kit. So ideally, um, here's the scenario, the guy brings it in and says, my cruise control is not working. And I go, hmm, let's go out and look at your motorcycle. And I said, yeah, you're gonna need a master rebuild to fix my cruise control? Yep, because your brake light's on all the time now, and now my cruise control won't work because, or better yet, when it's starting to fail, you got the, the brake levers attached here, you're driving down the highway and that spring is getting all clapped out because it's not pushing the lever all the way back to shut the brake light off. So then you're hitting bumps, or worse yet, they got those little dangly things tied to the brake lever and it's in the wind doing this, fatiguing that spring, and then the cruise control will intermittently shut off and they don't know why. Well, because the brake light's being activated. It's, you know, you, you can do it. You can follow a motorcycle down the road and you can see that brake light coming off and on and I know, huh, he needs to rebuild his front brake master cylinder because it's pretty important to have a brake light on a motorcycle, you know. So, 00 to 07, go out and pull your brake in. If, if the lever doesn't click back all the way, I would recommend buying the OEM Master Rebuild Cylinder Kit. It comes with a little heavy duty spring now. Pops that lever back. Pretty important. So that was another little tick tip. That's the one I wanted to tell you about. And let's see here. I think we kind of covered everything there. Yep, I'll go over here. Okay. you went out and bought an old motorcycle and somebody has you know put aftermarket components on it doesn't have anything that looks like this and that's kind of common you know these custom bikes they're putting a 23 inch wheel on it or whatever you know and they they want to dress it up so they're they're throwing some really expensive components on here and some of them are throwing some really inexpensive components on it so you got one extreme to the other to where um, it's really going to come down to you know the vendor you're comfortable with, uh, what you're looking for. 
is this just a trailer queen where you go, oh, you know what, it's a show bike, kind of, because some of them are, and they, they really don't care how the brake works, they just want it to look cool. And that's not my deal, but I'm just saying, when it comes to the aftermarket world, you can spend a lot of money and maybe not get great quality brakes, and uh, if it's a really old aftermarket brake, you're probably not even getting parts to rebuild it to where now you're like, okay, can I go back to stock? You know, is it even going to allow me to, you know, is the fork slider, uh, you know, what's, what's the configuration? So, aftermarket world, you can spend a lot of money or you can buy imported stuff that's not very good and sometimes you get the same result, you know. I've seen where it seems like the rotors tend to warp on them quickly and uh, it's unfortunate because you're spending a lot of money on them and, but it matches your wheel, you know, so. Something you got to keep in mind, um, another thing, when you're putting a rotor on and you're buying some cool guy aftermarket rotor and then you buy these chrome bolts, uh, they scare me because they're, the quality of it is usually not very desirable. So what happens is the uh, bolt can deteriorate or break and incrementally, you know, yeah, yeah, you can Loctite it, but if, it, if it's still, it's, the quality of them isn't that great. So for me, I like the stock stuff or I like a good quality grade eight. You're probably better off putting in a factory bolt or something similar and then getting a decorative chrome cap to go over that bolt because especially on the rear pulley sprocket because that's where I do see a, a lot of failures the bolt starts incrementally coming loose. You don't know it until you're, <laughs> you know, far away from home and then you realize, oh my God, my whole rear wheel is deteriorated and now it's junk. So make a note of that. Sometimes stock is best, so. Okay, did you want to see if somebody wanted to ask a question about something or? Absolutely, I think absolutely. We're, I think we ran the gamut here touch base on all your items there. Yeah, looks notes. like it. Very good, very good. Well, we'd like to say thanks for uh, folks uh, tuning in. Uh, Joel and Deb, say hello. Um, we have an uh, we are giving an audience to the Harley Queen. Uh, really? We are in the presence wow. of royalty. I didn't know that. Uh, Mason uh, says hello. And uh, uh, quite a few others. And we do have some questions. Uh, O4 Softail. Soft brake lever, what's up? Well, 04, that motorcycle is almost 20 years old now. I know it sounds weird, but it's got to be almost 18, right? So that's getting pretty old, but okay. Obviously, if, if it's soft, like I was going back to the bleeding aspect, um, you got new brake pads. You put your new brake pads in, you looked at your rotor, the rotor, I don't know how many miles are on this bike, you know, if it's got. 50 or 60 and the, the rotors get worn, but at any rate, look at the rotor, everything's cool there. I got new brake pads in it, of course. Yep, all right. Now, stock brake line, and like I said, it's, it's, it's difficult to chase uh, bleeding the brake on a motorcycle like that, and uh, you know, they, people struggle with it because it's, it's not all that easy to do. So you're gonna have to, what you're gonna wanna do is try and properly bleed those brakes because if it's soft that's a good indication you still have air in the system so try back bleeding the system try bleeding it from the other direction you can try and get this thing to the highest point you know and rotate if, when you have the cap off and obviously if it's dot four you're going to want to cover your gas tank because guess what dot four loves to eat paint and you can see that on you know any late model bike, you can see how it's kind of sweated out of there and deter deteriorated the paint. But more importantly, at the end of the day, if you've struggled and you've tried everything, yeah, you might need braided brake lines too, you know, because the brake line is maybe starting to deteriorate, so. Cool. And we have tons of uh, videos from, actually, uh, we have uh, Evo through M8 brake bleeding, uh, brake pad changes, so make sure to check those out in our maintenance section. Um, you did touch base on it a little bit, and I just want to confirm, Sinter versus Organic, uh, it's almost, you know, you're a brake guy, mm -hmm. you like to stop, so if there's a little brake noise, you don't. Well, 
you get, like, you're not as concerned yeah. if you're stopping better. Yeah, it, it, it's gonna come down to the year of your motorcycle. This old stuff, they just didn't have centered stuff and they ran the organic brake pad, but anything really 84 and later, I would try and get centered brakes myself just because it uh, doesn't fade. It can, it's the longevity is twice of that in organic. I mean, I've mm -hmm. seen people, the draw to the organic brake pad is they're so cheap. And I, I, it always blows my mind that people sometimes want to go on the internet and buy the cheapest brake pad they can get. And it's like, eh, it doesn't work that way. I, I get that they go to the dealer and they go, 55 bucks for brake pads. Well, you don't have to you know, necessarily go to the dealer to get a cinder brake pad, but you can find them aftermarket wise that are less money. But for me, if, it, if it's a later model bike, I always gotta go with centered. Right. But if it's a, driving you crazy, yeah, try try the Kevlar, try the one that's 50-50, you know? Right. But the biggest thing that you said too is, is keep up with your maintenance. Clean the rotors. Yeah. Make sure the pads are clean. If you're, depending on your roads that yeah. you're driving on, Right. Um, you yeah. Know, so if go with the better brake. Um, cheap when you're stopping. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Well, and it's like I said, some of the guys are chasing the noise aspect <laughs> yeah, of yeah. it. They, they, right. They're like, I don't care if I get 5,000, 6,000 miles. Right, right. They're happy and they, you know, whatever. So exactly. it's your motorcycle experiment. Absolutely. Um, you know, the whole almost seems like Harley came into the a ABS world four decades later than everybody else or whatever it is. Yep. Um, you know, in your 20 years at your own shop and previously at dealerships, um, when those started to come around, did you see a lot of failing units? And if so, what, what was the failure? Was it the unit itself or something else? Well, our deal was, uh, you know, they, for two years they had the warranty. So then, mm -hmm. and it took about two years for them to start failing. They weren't necessarily failing right out of the gate. But as time went on, uh, you know, if you weren't changing your brake fluid, dot four, like I say, is kind of susceptible to absorbing moisture and deteriorating. And, and another thing, I guess I'm glad you brought that up because I don't know if I mentioned that, but on an ABS motorcycle like Nate's here, I don't know if this is have ABS or not. It doesn't look like it. At any rate, you put brake pads in your ABS bike. What I like to do is I actually go out I'm on a back industrial park, there's nobody around. I go out and dynamite that brake because what I'm doing is I'm, first of all, I'm testing to see if the ABS works and now I'm, I'm purging the system to where I'm activating it. And I think that's probably the biggest problem with uh, Harley because every time you start your car, that ABS cycles. It says, Ch -ch -ch, I work and it's purging the system. Now your motorcycle, you, you've probably rode it for five years and you've never had that Bambi moment or, or where you've had to dynamite that brake and uh, and purge that system. So really, if you, if you want to do yourself a favor, go find a big parking lot and feel what that feels like because uh, ABS is really a wonderful thing and I bet it saved a lot of lives because before ABS, people never would go out and practice the emergency stop. And I, I recommend everybody do that. If you're new, or even if you've been riding 100 years and you think you're the best motorcycle rider in the world, but if you don't utilize your front brake and your rear brake evenly in a, a total full-on emergency situation, typically you've got a tenth of a second to react to whatever it is that's going down. And what happens if you don't have ABS, that rear wheel locks up that rear end stepping out and you're going to probably high side and hit the deck. And if you're going fast, it's going to hurt. So the nice thing about ABS is you dynamite that rear brake and front brake and that motorcycle just slows down. So it's, it's great for, even if you're an experienced rider, ABS is great. So, but as far as the failures, right. getting, getting back to that, I'd say a, a, a majority of it, uh, you know, you look at your sensors, you look at the wire harness, you see what's going on, the fuse, whatever, you mm. know, you're trying to troubleshoot it. And if it comes down to the end to where, you know, you got this gut feeling that it's the ABS unit, for the most part, you're tied to digital tech, but there again, they're gonna say, okay, have you been doing your maintenance? Have you been flushing your brake fluid? Cause that's, I think that's the death nail on that whole unit, you right. know, so. 
And this is more of a general question and an opinion, I guess, for you. Did you like it when Harley switched to Brembo? I guess, well, did, did you like it working on them? Did you, do you like it as a better product, a better stopping? Yeah, out? I think, right. I mean, like I said, this motorcycle's got it 08 and later. When they came out with it, um, you know, they work great. Uh, the stopping power is wonderful. They're easy to work on. Uh, my whole deal is the rotors. It seems like the rotors tend to warp, you know, sooner than normal. And I guess the other pet peeve is, and I, I, I think I see with the direction and why Harley's doing it, and it's probably, uh, if you look at the brake pad material here, these are almost virtually new. Now we go back to 00 to 07, and look at how thick those brake pads are. Hmm. So every time you're getting a tire, you're getting a set of $55 brake pads. It's great marketing, but mm -hmm. that's probably my only drawback on the, the Brembo. Yeah. The brake pads are so narrow to begin with. It's like, what? what? You, you want, yeah, they're, right, they're right. almost wore out. Other than that, no, the brake's wonderful. You know? Cool. Um, guest says, and it's not the hotel guest that's staying with you, it's a guest online. Do you need to deglaze brake pads rotors? Deglaze, like a turkey, what is deglazing? Well, there again, you glaze a turkey. Depending you know. on what you subjected the bike to, um, and and how bad. I mean, you know, obviously you're going to look at the rotor. Yeah. If the rotor looks cool, I mean, if it looks like, hey, you know, I go, I put some heat into it, and it's not warped, and it's not all galled up from years of use. Uh, basically, your deglazing is going to be cleaning it with contact cleaner and a rag and cleaning it that way. I mean, if it's truly got uh, s some sort of material embedded into the rotor, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's going to come down to, you know, how, how bad the damage is or what's impregnated. I know brake pads, they get that way, and, and people do pull them out. They probably uh, put them on a little fine piece of plat, uh, flat plate glass and maybe a little bit of uh, fine grit sandpaper, touch them up that way, hit them with the carb spray, uh, compressed air more than likely, which you wouldn't want to breathe in. But uh, yeah, if they're glazed that way, touch them up, put them in, good to go. I mean, you know. Cool. Well, um, we're almost to the end. Uh, a couple off topic. I'm going to give you one off topic. Um, in regards to gas stabilizer, I won't say the brand or I guess there's what, only a couple brands out there, but mm -hmm. storage wise, how do you feel about gas? stabilizers well as we know gas today is is terrible you know it's the longevity for fuel in a gas tank in your lawnmower is about a month and a half because not, you know nothing sealed it's venting to the atmosphere and it deteriorates quickly and you go oh man my low speed jets plugged on my snow blower already or you know most motorcycles now are fuel injected so it's kind of a sealed unit so it buys you a little more time if you got a carbureted bike yeah, you clean the carburetor and two months later that low speed jet is plugged again. Darn. So uh, the only problem I have with stabilizers, I guess, uh, depending on, you know, the vendor, uh, sometimes I'm afraid of them just because if you've got a liner in the gas tank, uh, the components in your carburetor, you know, the accelerator diaphragm, the inlet needle, how sensitive are they to these, uh, you know, chemicals in this stuff? So for me, if you're gonna pickle your motorcycle, you just, you gotta either fill it full of av gas or, or something like that, or you gotta pickle it. And uh, if you're not gonna ride it, that's probably the way to go. You know, drain the carb, fill the tank full of a really good quality fuel so that no rust can get in there. Or if you're saying, hey, I'm going to Europe for a year or whatever, then you drain it and fog it with something, you know. But I'm, not a huge fan of uh, putting another additive in. I mean, I just, I haven't really experimented with it because I always babysit my gas tank and carburetor. Right, right. I don't want to come into that. And, and I've had people that they just don't ride their motorcycle much. We clean the carb in the spring and then, oh, this rally is going to be in South Dakota and they drag their bike out. <laughs> it doesn't idle again. 
And then I have QuickBooks and I look and I say, well, you put eight miles on it going home in two months. And you had crappy gas in there and you added some fresh gas. So yeah, it's gas is bad, you know, right. it's just not very good fuel, so. Cool, well, thanks for that. And I guess we'll leave on a personal note. Um, Mason wants to know what got you into riding motorcycles. Uh, I think when it comes to riding motorcycles, you really don't have a choice. I think it's just something that, you know how that is. You don't say, hey, I'm going to go out and be a motorcycle one day. You just uh, or ride, ride motorcycles. I think my whole thing was is my folks didn't want me racing. They didn't want me riding. And you know how that is. When they say no, that means I'm going to go full on into it. So I don't know. It's just something that's it's kind of, I don't know, born into you. You know, I like it. It's just. That's there deal. from the beginning. Yeah. At the end of the day, I always can go ride my motorcycle. No matter how bad life is or whatever, I can go race my dirt bike or I can hop on this motorcycle. I hit a country road and I don't have a cell phone on me. I don't want to talk to the, anybody on the back of the bike. I just want to go out and enjoy it. There you so. go. Very good. Well, I guess we've, uh, we've tackled the questions. You've told us quite a bit of information. Um, Say goodbye. Cool. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for getting me for, through my first live video. Awesome so. job. We'll see you next time.